I just want to share some things from my heart from 2 Corinthians uh, 6, 2. There's this phrase, I'm not going to teach, um, but I just want to share something that uh, has been on my heart since I heard last Sunday when Marty gave a prophetic utterance and said, now is, be prepared, now's the time to get ready. And um, I believe that now is the time. I just want to give a, I believe a prophetic word the Lord just put on my heart. Now is the time. Now is the time. Let me read a couple of passages of scripture to kind of um, blend into what I want to share just briefly. And I know that uh, some of us smell the food. <laughs> and um, I don't, I'm not going to be long this morning, believe it or not, I don't think, unless the Lord wants me to be long, right? But um, Romans chapter 13 and verse 11. And do this, understanding the present time. We've got to understand the present time. Let me just stop there. Jesus rebuked the Pharisees because they did not discern the times. We can be ignorant of the time that we're living in. There's seasons and there's unique times. And we need to discern the time that we're in. Discern. Understand the present time. The hour has come for you to wake up from your slumber because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. Amen. Now when the Bible talks about salvation, it talks about it in a broad sense many times. There's a salvation we receive when we accept Jesus, that's our past salvation. There's a present salvation in which Jesus is delivering us and saving us from the power of sin. And then there's a future salvation when we get the whole package deal, when Jesus comes again and we receive our glorified body and we become like him in every sense of the term. And there's the final salvation of what we have in Jesus. That's still future, amen? So there's three tenses of salvation. So when he says our salvation is near, he's talking about our future salvation from the very presence of sin. We've been saved from the penalty of sin. We're being saved from the power of sin. And someday we're going to be saved from the presence of sin. Amen? So understand the time. And then in 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Let me share another passage of scripture with you. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. And this is what <clears throat> the Lord has just put on my heart. Just simply put this very simple truth. No deep teaching today. Just a very simple truth. Now is the time. Now is the time. Second Corinthians 6, as God's fellow workers, we urge you. He's writing to the church. He's not writing to unbelievers, although the message is for all of us. He says, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. For he says, in the time of my favor, I heard you, and in the day of salvation, I helped you. I tell you, and he's writing to Christians, the church, I should say, the church. Now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the time to be ready for Jesus coming. I've been saved 44 years, and I've seen a lot of things in my Christian life and a lot of things in the world. And I believe, believe with all my heart, based on Scripture, which I don't have time to bring out right now, but I believe we're living in a very unique time. I believe that we're living in an unprecedented time right now. I believe, based on scripture, that we're, believe, we're living in the last days. It doesn't matter what your eschatology, your view of last things is. 
But I believe with all my heart, based with a lot of other Bible teachers, that this is a unique time that we're living. These are the last days of grace. Jesus is coming sooner than we think he's coming. And I believe with all my heart that the Lord wants us to be ready for his coming. Ready or not, he's coming. But because I'm saying that, these, this is a unique time. And in the last days, as I understand scripture, my study of scriptures, it is going to be a unique time because there's going to be an increase and in an intensity second to none in past history. There's going to be an intensity of God's spirit and an intensity of evil. There's going to be an intensity of righteousness and an intensity of unrighteousness. You see, Satan knows when God is working. It's not Satan working and then God working. It's God works and then Satan tries to counteract what God is doing. It's not God trying to thwart Satan. It's Satan trying to thwart God. And so as God increases his activity, as God increases his spirit in the last days, and as God begins to wrap this up, Understand, harvest time, we're beginning to see now, I, I, more people are getting saved now than ever before. I think it's three to four times people, uh, the t- times the population of wor- the world's population, as far as the growth of the world's population, three to four times more people are getting saved on the face of the earth. So there's a harvest coming in now, right now. Bring, God's bringing in the harvest and God's bringing in people into the kingdom because he's wrapping this up. And it's because there's going to be an intensity and there's going to be an intensity of God's kingdom and as well as Satan's kingdom, we as Christian believers need to discern the times. I can go on and show you all the signs that I see, but I'm not, I see many signs that tell me that we're living in the unique, the la, what the Bible calls the last days. And sad to say that many, many Christian believers are falling asleep. And if there's a time not to fall asleep, it's now. It's time to be wide awake because Jesus is coming. And if he's coming soon, that means there's, this period of time is going to be unique, second to none, unprecedented. No other time like now. And the Bible says if it's possible, even the very elect shall fall away. In other words, you have to be on the ball spiritually. Amen. Never have I heard so much confusion in preaching and teaching as I'm hearing now. I was watching something the other day. I had to shut it off after two minutes. I said, that's not the gospel. That's not the gospel. Far away from the gospel. And sad to say, many Christians don't discern what the gospel is. Understand this. Many, Christ, many, many, because there's so much confusion and many see so much of, of uh, Satan's activity, they just throw up their hands and say, I don't want anything to do with that. No, it's just the opposite. If Satan, if we see the enemy working, how much more it should motivate us to seek God. Amen. Because God's supernatural kingdom is greater than Satan's supernatural kingdom. Amen. Both are supernatural. But we need to be on the ball spiritually. And now is the time to be awake. Now is the time to be spiritually alive. Now is the time to be on the ball spiritually. Now is the time to receive all that God has for us. Now is the time to move ahead in God's kingdom like we've never moved ahead before. Now is the time to reach in, in, in souls like we've never reached before. Now is the time to be ministers of Jesus. Now is the time to be filled with God's spirit. Now is the time, not tomorrow. Hallelujah. Now is the time. Now is the time to be saved if you're not saved. It's possible to think you're saved. It's possible to have a knowledge of salvation. It's possible to be on the fringes of the church. It's possible to have a head knowledge of salvation, but never really be saved. Now's the time to make sure you're saved. Amen. 
Now's the time to make sure and nail it down that you know Jesus as your Savior and Lord. Not just because you're in the church, not just because you have a head knowledge, but have you had an encounter, a personal conversion to Jesus Christ. Now's the time to settle it that you know Christ. Now is the time as believers to make a full surrender to the Lord. And you've heard it in this church and you've heard the teaching that believers are to make a full, unconditional, whole surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ. And in, in this, when I said about it, I had to turn this off, what bothered me about this teaching and preaching was as, uh, emphasizing Christians having a right. So we have a right to this, and we have a right to this. And, and if you're living for the Lord, uh, you won't be touched. Uh, nobody can touch you. And nobody can hurt you. Nobody can persecute. Something like persecute, I even said the word. And I thought to myself, wait a minute. What about all those godly Christians in other lands that are preaching the gospel and preaching Jesus and living for the Lord and miracles are happening, and yet they are being persecuted for Christ? There's no guarantee that we'll never get persecuted for Christ. In fact, if I read my Bible correctly, the New Testament, when you serve Jesus, you're to deny yourself. I'm to give up my rights as a Christian. Amen. I'm to give and to surrender to his rights and his right over me to rule over me. Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but I, Christ lives in me in the life I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith in the Son of God. I am crucified. Self is to be crucified. He must increase, I must decrease. That's the message of the gospel. It's not promoting yourself. It's not getting everything. I have a right to this, and I have a right to this, and I have a right to have material things, and I have a right to have a million dollars in the bank, and I have a right to have five cars, and I have a right to have five airplanes. I don't see that in the scriptures, beloved. But what I see in the scriptures is I, have, I should serve the Lord and, and give myself to the Lord and deny self and give myself entirely to the kingdom of God. And then when I give myself entirely to the kingdom of God, there's a peace and a joy that fills my soul. Because I'm not living for myself, I'm living for the kingdom and I'm living to serve God and to serve others. Amen. That's the gospel. It's not how to get a million dollars. We've, come, we've gone far from the gospel today. I mean, I'm hearing messages that I have never, I would, I said, that is not even near what the scripture talks about. And this is a time of the, this is a sign of the times. Now is the time to give ourselves fully to the Lord. Now is the time to spend quality time with the Lord every day. Now is the time not to go 24 hours and go out throughout the whole day without seeking the Lord. Now is the time not to just get up in the morning, do your thing, and go, back, go to bed at night and not even walk with the Lord. Now is the time to spend quality time with the Lord every day in, with Jesus. To spend that, that priority time with the Lord every day because that one day can make a difference in your life. Spend that quality time with the Lord. Spend that time in the Word every day. Have that burning bush experience every day. I'm not talking about necessarily like Moses, but this is our burning bush, right? And so you need to take time with the Lord every day. You say, I'm not a reader. Well, listen, I know, I know a brother that was, didn't pass sixth grade education. He got saved, and, and, and just uh, Gary Lloyd, I'm thinking of Pat. And God used them in a great way, in a mighty way, uh, in, in mighty ways. And uh, he said, Pastor, when I got into the scriptures, I learned English. He read the King James on top of that. How about? <laughs> Amen. But he learned English, he got in the word, he got in the scriptures. And, and I believe the scriptures quicken your mind. Makes alive your brain cells. And so take that time to read the word every day. Don't skip a time. This is your lifeline. This is your spiritual manna from heaven. This is your food. Yes, I give food, hopefully, on Sunday morning and, and Sunday school, Wednesday night. But you need to take time every day to eat. You need to take time and be in his presence. It's, it's a matter of being in the presence of the Lord, seeking him in the word and taking time to communicate with the Lord, spending time. I was reading about Jesus. He spent time alone many times with his father. And I said, how much more if Jesus, the son of God, spent a lot of time with his father, how much more as a Christian believer, I should spend time with the Lord. 
Spend that quality time. Spend that priority time. Spend that time every day with the Lord. And then now is the time to walk with the Lord throughout the day. Talk to him, like we sang the song. Walking with him every day and, and communicating with him throughout the day. Don't just come Wednesday and Sunday and that's it. You don't talk to the Lord at all. No, every day you should walk with the Lord. Talk to him. Communicate with him. And he begins to show you things. Especially in these last days. We need discernment when we make decisions today. Christians make decisions. Big decisions without seeking the Lord today. Where they should live. What job they should get. What they should buy. You need to seek the Lord about your big decisions. Because the Lord knows what's ahead. Pray it through before you buy that thing. Now's the time to get out of debt. Where'd that come from? I don't know, but it's a good thing, right? (laughs) Now's the time to get out of debt. You don't need everything. Because of the stupid prosperity preaching we've had and the stupid prosperity teaching that we had, that you got to have five airplanes and five Rolls Royce before you're happy. My joy is not in things. My joy is rooted in my relationship with Jesus. Amen. If he blesses me, thank God. If he doesn't bless me with material things, thank God anyhow. But like Job says, whether in the thin, whether they're thick, or whether I'm plenty, or whether I'm lacking, I'm going to praise him anyhow. If your relationship is based on your material things, you have a wrong relationship. Missionaries today are lacking, and they're not because they're not serving God, not because they're not in the perfect will of God. But they're joyful. Have you ever, I've never seen a missionary come up here and, and, and behind the pulpit and say, I'm so sad, I'm a missionary. <laughs> Every one of them are, have the joy of the Lord. But if the Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God. That's what the scripture says. And all these other things shall be added. It doesn't say, seek those things first and the kingdom will be added unto you. Seek first the kingdom of God, and all these other things shall be added unto you. We need to get back to the word of God, the scriptures. Now is the time to spend that time with the Lord. Now is the time to read our Bibles. Now is the time to know the scriptures. Now is the time to study the word. I thank God when I first got saved, I, had, I was under good Bible teaching, good Bible preaching. Now I just tell people, I'm just a Bible preacher. That's what I am, a Bible preacher. I can't be anything else. That's what God's called me to be, a Bible preacher. Not a motivational speaker. But a Bible preacher. He's called me to preach the word. Not preach ten ways to be successful. How is that going to measure up to eternity when we stand before the Lord? How many souls are we going to bring when we stand before Jesus? Now is the time to reach our relatives. Now's the time to reach reach out to our family and not be ashamed that you're a Christian, that you're saved, that you belong to Jesus. Now's the time to witness to everyone that's around us to tell them about Jesus. To be bold in our witness. I was having a big discussion with somebody uh, just the other day. Well, I'm not called to be. They said, that's not my gift to witness. I said, wait a minute, stop right there. It is the call of God upon every Christian believer to be a verbal witness for Jesus. Yes, some are called to be evangelists, have that extra anointing. But the Bible says, Paul said to Timothy, do the work of an evangelist. So every one of us ought to be doing fishing for men. Every one of us ought to be bold witnesses for Jesus. You say, I don't have it. Ask God to fill you with boldness. He'll give you a new boldness. He'll give you a burden for souls. That'll motivate you from the inside. I got to talk to that person about Jesus. The other day, I I don't know where I was, and... and, um, I was going to leave, and the Holy Spirit said, give him a booklet. <laughs> no, I, just this one time, it's, you know, I'm ready. I, I, read, I should have done it before, so it won't matter. The Holy Spirit, do, go give him a booklet. So I had to give him a booklet. You've got to get in the habit of being a witness for Jesus. You've got to have a, be conscious of the fact that people all around us need to hear the gospel of Jesus. Ask God every day to give you boldness, because you need boldness every day. The enemy wants to put fear in your heart to keep you from witnessing and give you 101 excuses why you shouldn't talk to your family members about Jesus. I'll never forget when I first got, we had a, this is way back, 
when I got, had a Thanksgiving dinner with all my relatives, and I said, Lord, what an opportunity. I want to I want to give the gospel out. Just give me an just give me a little inch. Give me a little opening. So I was praying, you know, as, as the dinner was going on, and the Lord gave me that opening. And I shared the gospel with all my, my uncle, aunt, my grandmother, all the, everybody about Jesus. We ought to be ready to give the gospel out. Now is the time to witness to your fellow employee. Now is the time to witness to your boss. Now is the time to witness to your neighbor. Now is the time to reach our family members for Jesus. Because I believe scripture teaches that they need to get saved before Jesus comes, not after. I believe the door will be shut after that, contrary to some teaching. Now is the time to reach our relatives. Now is the time to witness. Now is the time to put the Lord first in everything we do. Now is the time to serve the Lord. Some of you are on the sidelines because you got hurt in church somewhere. And I understand that. We can get hurt. Or you're afraid to, to step out and do something. But now is the time to serve the Lord. You've been called to serve the Lord. Now is the time to reach out, to work for the Lord, and do something for Jesus. To be busy working for the Lord when he comes. Now is the time to be faithful to the Lord. Some of us are unfaithful. We're unfaithful in our attendance. We're unfaithful in our giving. We're unfaithful in coming to church. We're unfaithful in our serving the Lord. Sometimes we can't rely upon some people. But listen, it's time to be faithful to the Lord in everything we do. Because when we stand before him, I want to hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. He didn't say, well done, good and talented servant. Man, I look back, the ministry has been men and women far more talented than I am. Far more, more gifts than I've ever had. We're out of the ministry now. It's not a matter of how much talent you have. It's a matter of being faithful to God. Whether you're teaching a Sunday school class, whether you're singing in the choir, whether whatever you're doing for Jesus, be faithful. Now is the time. Now is the time to quit that thing you know is wrong before the Lord. There's some things Christians are doing, they know it's wrong. They're compromising. It's sin. Now is the time to live holy to the Lord. Now is the time to be sexually pure before the Lord. Someone told me, what was it the other, uh, 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 someone just mentioned that now the big thing today is about open marriage. Open marriage. That's from the pit of hell, beloved. The Bible doesn't call it open marriage. Open marriage is supposedly you're married and as long as both of you agree to that, you can have extramarital affairs. That's called open marriage. You know what the Bible calls that? Fornication and adultery, that's what the Bible calls that. Amen. Now's the time to teach our children what's right and what's wrong before the Lord. Now's the time to have, I believe, it'd be a good time to start right now if you're not, family devotions. Got one amen out of that. <laughs> I'm impressed every time I think about this of my daughter-in-law, who's her, her father is a doctor, who's a busy. How many know a doctor's medical doctor is very busy? But Faye was brought up with every every night at ten o'clock. Every night they would have Bible reading and prayer in the family. Every night, father, mother, wherever you are in home, take time, make it a discipline in your home. They get, get their family members around the table and spend some time reading the Bible together. We used to call that family altar. Take time every day to put, is Jesus the center of your home today? We have people going, one family member going this way, another family going member this way, another family member going this way, everybody's going their own thing, and there's no unity in the home. Now's the time to put the Lord first in our homes. Now it's the time to clean house. There's some things in our house that need to go. Some ungodly music needs to go. Some ungodly things in our home need to go. I was going to say, now's the time to get the bar out of your home, but that's, you know, it is. I hope you don't have a bar in your home. Somebody say, ouch, if that... <laughs> Amen. I believe Christians should practice abstinence. 
What do you want to teach our children? To drink? Drink a little bit? What if they have a prone, what if they have, they have a tendency toward alcoholism? And you're the cause because you said a little bit's okay. Satan always wants to have a little bit, you know. <laughs> a little bit of poison, you know. Why do you need to drink anyhow? I don't know why. I didn't, I didn't even plan to say this today, but I'm going to say it anyhow. I felt bold today. Hey, Amen. Why do you got to drink anyhow? Why do you got to drink? Well, the little wine is for your stomach's sake. Yeah, but those were days when the water was polluted and they had to have a little wine, right? <laughs> Amen. And most, most drinking today is not for medicinal purposes. It's time to live holy. Time to clean house. It's time to say, I mean business with the Lord. It's time to get radical for Jesus. It's time to go all the way with Jesus. Hey, God's raising up a Gideon army today. You know, there's some things that we have liberty to do, but we don't do them because they may be a hindrance to somebody. And there's some things that are not sin, and I understand that. There may be other things that are not, we're doing that may not be sin, and per se. But you know, the Bible says lay aside every weight. So if it's weighing, does it, here's the test. Does this thing dull the spiritual edge in my Christian life? Does this thing dull the spiritual edge in my Christian life? Does it enhance me the, to live for the Lord? Romans 14 talks about that, about those gray, gray areas. Does this, does this dull my spiritual edge? Does this keep me from going full force for Jesus? Now is the time to give ourselves fully to the Lord. Now is the time to seek more of the kingdom. Amen. I look at myself. I was first in the Bible, Bible church circles. Didn't believe in the supernatural or very little of the, just of the supernatural. But inside of my heart was a hunger for more. So I sought more. And as you seek more, you experience more. Right. Amen. You seek and you'll be filled. Amen. <laughs> I wanted more. You're in a church here where all the gifts of the Spirit are manifested, where we believe in the power of God and the supernatural power of God. And some of you don't make use of that. It's time for you, now is the time for you to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now is the time for you to experience the supernaturalness of the Spirit. Don't just hear the messages. Don't just hear things, the supernatural, around, the, around in this church services. Now is the time for you to get hungry. Get out of that religiosity that you've been bathed in in the past. It's tradition and religion that keeps you from moving forward in the supernatural things. Amen. First time I ever raised my hands, because I was never taught to raise my hands. First time I ever raised my hands in worship, I went like this. I thought I was going to crack. <laughs> but then something happened when you keep going like this. When you keep saying, Lord, I want more. Lord, I want more. Lord, I want more. Lord, I want more. I want more of the supernaturalness. I want more of the gifts of the Spirit. I want more of the anointing. I want more of you, Jesus. I want more, more, and more, and much more. Now's the time to seek the Lord. Now's the time to seek more of the Spirit. Now's the time to get hungry for the Lord. Now's the time to be spiritually alive like never before. Now's the time to be ministers of Jesus Christ. We're called to do the works of Jesus. But we need to be empowered by his spirit. Get a burden for lost souls and reach out to people that need Jesus every day. Now's the time to love people with the love of Jesus. Not love people with a natural love, but love them with the love of Jesus. And have the heart of Jesus. When Jesus saw people, he was moved with compassion. Are you moved with compassion when you see people suffering? Are you moved with compassion when you see the lost? We need to have the heart of Jesus as well as the power of Jesus. Now is the time to be a radical Christian. Let's pray.
Thank you for watching the presentation from the New Life Christian Fellowship. We are located at 6235 West North Avenue, Oak Park, Illinois. For more information, call us at 708-848-2441. Thank you. May the Lord Jesus Christ truly bless you.